Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Like many of you, I've been taking a little bit more time off and spending more family time uh, in the summer. And in particular, my son and I have been completing some garden projects together. So this week, i like to give an update on the real world vaccine efficacy, natural immunity, vitamin D level, and as well as the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. So that is a pack full of content in this video. And But before we get started, we do have to recognize COVID-19 is a disease that can cause hospitalizations and death in children. But a lot of the time, this disease is more mild in the children, and also sometimes the infections are asymptomatic. According to the KFF poll published in April, a large share of parents said they will either only get their child vaccinated if they are required for school, or said their child will definitely not get the COVID-19 vaccine in the age 5 to 11 group. 4 in 10 want to wait and see for their children under 5 years old, and I'm one of the parents who are wait and see. About a third to half of the parents do not believe they have enough information about the vaccine safety and effectiveness for their age group. And indeed, with the emergence of all these new Omicron subvariants, the vaccine efficacies in terms of protections against the infection from clinical trial, that data is no longer applicable in the real world. So let's look at one of the most recent study published regarding Pfizer vaccine real world efficacy in children. A recent study published in the New England Journal of Medicine investigated the real world effectiveness of the Pfizer COVID vaccine against Omicron in Singapore children 5 to 11 years old. The study was conducted from January 21st, 2022 through April 8th, 2022. The Omicron BA1 and BA2 were the two dominant subvariants at that time. At the end of the study period, there were 173,237 children fully vaccinated. 30,656 children were partially vaccinated and 52,043 were unvaccinated. The study used the unvaccinated children population as the reference group and saw 3,303.5 all reported COVID infections, 473.8 PCL confirmed COVID, and 30 COVID-related hospitalizations per 1 million person days. Among partially vaccinated children, vaccine effectiveness was 13.6% against all SARS-CoV-2 infections, 24.3% against PCR-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection, and 42.3% against COVID-19-related hospitalization. And in fully vaccinated children, vaccine effectiveness was 36.8% against all SARS-CoV-2 infection, 65.3% against PCR-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection, and 82.7% effective against COVID-related hospitalization. The CDC had made it clear that all the current COVID vaccines are designed to prevent hospitalization and death, and fortunately, no children died in the study period, but 288 children were hospitalized. Five of the 288 children received supplemental oxygen, four of them were admitted to intensive care unit, and of those five children, one was unvaccinated, two were partially vaccinated, and two were fully vaccinated. So at a glance, some people may ask, hey, how come more vaccinated children were on supplemental oxygen? Now we need to be very careful and think beyond the context here. Children with chronic diseases are more likely to get vaccinated than those who were healthy. So it is very possible that those who got vaccinated and got oxygen had more problems to begin with, so that may have caused a worse outcome. 
Now, another thing we need to keep in mind is that this study were looking at vaccine effectiveness against BA1 and BA2 infection. Now we have more infectious BA4 and 5 subvariants. So it is very likely that the real world efficacies is even lower than those that were reported in this uh, article. So now the next question is, how does natural immunity comes into play in children, which is actually a little bit more complicated than natural immunity in adult? And let's look at it. The correct way to assess natural or vaccine immunity is to measure antibody levels, memory B cells, and T cells. But the problem is that most studies only measure antibody levels. A small study published in the JAMA Network Open on March 9 looked at the antibody response differences between 57 children with an average age of 4 and 51 adults with an average age of 37 who tested positive for COVID between May 10th and October 28th, 2020. All of the participants had mild symptoms such as headache, fever, or were asymptomatic. They found that when children and adults had similar viral loads, only 37% of the children produced antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 virus compared with 76% of adults. It means measuring only antibody levels is not a very reliable way to assess both natural and vaccine-induced immunity in children. A different study published in Pediatric reported that 96% of children who recovered from COVID had measurable antibodies six months later, and that confirms some durability for those who had antibody responses. Another study published in Nature Immunology compared the antibody and cellular means T-cell immune response differences between children and adults. Children had higher geometric mean antibody titers or antibody concentration against all four regions of the SARS-CoV-2 virus than adults. Now, these regions are the spike, nucleocapsid, receptor binding domain, and the N-terminal domain of the spike protein. Most notably, antibodies against the N-terminal domain and the receptor binding domains were 2.3-fold and 1.7-fold higher in children than adult. Cellular or T-cell responses against the spike protein were also 2.1-fold higher in children and 60% of children who did not have detectable antibody levels had cellular responses. In a subgroup analysis, all children retain antibody immunity six months after the infection, which is similar to what was reported in the second study that I just went over, but only 7% of adults had it after six months. And in fact, 50% of the children that were in this subgroup analysis even had antibody responses after 12 months. Not only do children retain antibodies for a longer period, but they were also 1.8-fold higher than adults. So there is a clear difference between how children and adults handle COVID and this virus. Some of you may wonder what about the mysterious COVID-19-related multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, or often abbreviated as MISC, that could happen even after a mild infection. The good news is that a research letter published in the JAMA in May reported that MISC was milder or less frequently observed during the Omicron wave. Of the 171 MISC patients, 59 or 34.5% were diagnosed during the alpha wave, while 79 or 46.2% were identified during the delta, and only 33 or 19.3% in the Omicron wave. 
This study was done in Israel, and the researcher estimated that the incidence of MISC per 100,000 children was 54.5 during the alpha wave, 49.2 during the delta wave, and only 3.8 per 100,000 in the Omicron wave time. Now, compared with the Omicron period, the incidence of MISC was 14.3. Times higher during alpha wave and 12.9 times higher during the delta wave. So, what can parents do to help our children to fight COVID in addition to vaccination? Maintaining a healthy lifestyle is always the first answer. But if I were asked to name one factor, I would say vitamin D. A small research snapshot reported. By Nicholas Children's Hospital in Miami, showed that of the 14 of the 25 pediatric COVID patients they reviewed, all had MISC, and 10 of them had vitamin D deficiency, which is less than 30 nanogram per mil. A report from Turkey also saw that serum vitamin D levels were significantly lower in COVID-19 pediatric patients than in the control group. C-reactive protein level, which is a general inflammatory marker, was also higher in the low vitamin D group, although the differences were not significant. Now, these two studies suggested that maintaining normal levels of vitamin D in children may be important to fight COVID. A comparison study also showed that pandemic-related restrictions had caused significant decrease in vitamin D levels in school-aged children and adolescents. And that is one of the reasons that I've been doing a lot of garden works with my child, so that we are outside getting some vitamin D. Now, my wife and I are actually also planning a short beach trip in early August before my semester starts mid-August. Before we wrap up, there is something for us to think about. The manufacturers rely heavily on matching vaccine-induced antibody levels in adults and in children to claim vaccine effectiveness, but we still don't know how antibody levels correlated to infection protection or how high is high enough. We also saw how antibody and cellular responses to COVID infection in children is quite different from adults, and is still somewhat a mystery as to why. Now, even though only about a third of the children had detectable antibodies levels from infection, almost all of them had it for more than six months, compared to adults, which wane in about three to four months. So it is questionable to continuously. Top off antibodies with boosters in children five to seventeen, especially if the goal is to prevent hospitalization and death. The sad part is that the author's intention of many of the studies I went over was to provide a guide for vaccine regimens in children. Still, unfortunately, FDA decisions were mainly based on manufacturer recommendations. So this is a longer video because、uh, actually viewers have been asking me to go over a topic around this children vaccination things, and this video is actually、um, way overdue. And if you are a parent or a grandparent with young children at home, I hope you've learned something new from this video. And regardless if your child had already received a COVID nineteen vaccine or not. And please also leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Now that is all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. And meanwhile, please stay safe, stay healthy. And if you are living in the northern hemisphere, please also enjoy your summer and have a great time with your family. And meanwhile, that's everything for this week. Please take care and bye.